Canada featuring the Canadian Football League. Stay tuned for the wide open, high scoring style of play which has become the CFL trademark. This presentation of professional football from Canada is brought to you by Hilton Hotels. For business or pleasure, there is no place like Hilton. A man with a great deal of responsibility today is Bill Dell. There he is, the referee in chief. As you see, the other members of the officiating crew for the Sudden Death Eastern final game. Bernie Ruan will kick to Woodrow Wilson. And Alvin Skip Walker stationed near the Montreal five-yard line. It's underway. This is Skip Walker at his 15. A good-looking run back for Walker. At the 50-yard line, he is across center field of the Hamilton 52 to give Montreal great starting field position. Harold Woods pulled him down after a scintillating 44-yard opening kickoff return. Well, Bernie Ruoff not kicking this ball deep. He kicked it from the right hash and kicked it directly across field. And you can see that there are no Tiger Cats immediately downfield covering the kickoff. Walker chose to come up the middle. And as he turned it up the middle, there were no Tiger Cat players around and has given the Alouettes great field position on the half of 52. Yourself. Skip Walker, whose previous long run was 54, this one 44 on a kickoff return. Jerry Dottilio gives the ball to David Green. Over the top he goes. Good for five at the Hamilton 47 of the grasp of defensive tackle James Ramey, number 68. And here is the Montreal offense with David Green, Skip Walker, the running backs, receivers, Fred Boletnikoff, Keith Baker back from missing a game with injury. Big tight end, Nick Araki, and the senior member of the tight end core, Peter Dallariva. Boy, who grew up right around this area in the, Burlington. Down the just brought Skip Walker off. He was limping. Looked like an ankle twist. Could be an aggravation there. Araki in the backfield for him. Dottilio sprints right, throws back to the middle. He's got a strike to Baker at the 35-yard line. Montreal has their first offensive first down. Randy Graham, number 14. Former Saskatchewan Rough Rider made the tackle as the ball now is the 34. Well, one of the situations Hamilton's going to face all afternoon is trying to contain Jerry Dottilio. That time, Lau Wozniczynski, the defensive end, got trapped inside. Dottilio got well to the outside, threw back against the green over the middle, and Baker showing no signs of the injury that kept him out for a couple of games. They work on Skip Walker now. That Montreal bench, the pitch goes to David Green. Good coverage. Hamilton's right side reacted well and limits him to about a yard. Graham, the safety, was blitzing, and Carl Cornell, the middle linebacker, was pursuing, and it's indeed going to be a second and nine situation for the Alouettes. But Montreal has moved impressively, and you know in championship games how important it is to get that jump early. There's the Alouette offensive line. Doug Smith, the veteran, number 53, centers it. Dottilio deep, down a rebound. It's tipped away from him. Good coverage down there. Harold Woods was covering on the play along with David Shaw. And it was Shaw who deflected the ball as Dallariva reached up for it. Well, something we have to look for, Don, as the game goes along is the protection that the offensive line can give to their quarterback. That time, Dottilio stood right in the pocket, got lots of time to throw the ball to Dallariva, and both Shaw and Woods were there to knock it away. That makes it third down and nine. And Montreal will attempt to strike first here and cap this very impressive opening march with a 41-yard field goal attempt from the rookie, Jerry McGrath. And you got to wonder what's going through his mind right now. It is off to the right. Wide, bouncing in the end zone. The Tiger Cats are going to give up one. Marco Sincar concedes the single point as the Alouettes lead Hamilton 1-0 here in the early minutes of the Eastern Final. The first time today has the ball. Here's their offense. Obi Graves, watch him. Number three, ran for 150 yards in his last game against Toronto. The quarterback, Dave Marler from the state of Mississippi. Fakes to Graves. 
for Patterson over his head with Dickie Harris covering there incomplete. It'll be second down 10. That's a good combination to 71 Patterson, 8 the quarterback, Marler along with Gordy Patterson, number 34. Dunn was talking to John Priestner before the ball game, and he said the most relaxed guy in the Tiger Cat dressing room was Dave Marler. He said, for a young quarterback, he has never seen anybody handle pressure and the problems that are here today as Dave Marler was. Henry Waschuk, the veteran center, in front of him. And there's the Hamilton offensive line going second down 10, the 35-yard line. Good pass protection for Marler. He puts it up. Too far inside the 35 for Gord Patterson. Carl Braisley was covering him. Patterson was in behind but could not catch up with the pass. There's John Pay and the Hamilton head coach. Well, again, I know we'll talk about it a lot this afternoon, but the Alouettes were in a blitz situation, and the Tiger Cat offensive line and backs picked the blitz up, giving Marler plenty of time to throw that deep pass to Patterson. They drop back the team of Rhino and Harris. Great punt returners against a great putter. Bernie Ruoff standing at his 20-yard line. Not that deep. The ball tailing off. Gets a bounce near the 40-yard line. Rhino slipped and got up and gets nowhere. Out of bounds in front of the Hamilton bench at the 39-yard line. Jim Muller made the stop. A 36-yard punt by Bernie Ruoff. So Montreal, near the 40, will have the ball for the second time today. And the Ticants play it tough and physical. Here is their front seven. The defensive line and the linebackers in behind them. Good ones too. Player, Cornell, and Zambiazzi. The defensive backs you're looking at now. Skip Walker still not in there for Montreal. Dottilio was trying to throw. He's got a man open. Fred Belitnikov, the veteran of professional football in North America, gives Montreal a first down at the 52-yard line. Leroy Paul pulled him down, number 27. Kind of interesting, Don, that Jerry Dottilio has rolled twice today, once to the right, this time to the left, and both times he's gone back against the grain, which is unusual. They must have spotted something in that Hamilton defense that they are really rotating towards that side that Dottilio rolls to, and he's going to come back against that grain and put some pressure on him. He's two for three so far on the passing game, Dottilio. Flag is thrown as David Green cuts right and gets upended right there at center field. Smack dab on the 55-yard line by Jerry Anderson, a good one from Tampa Bay. The indication is Hamilton might have jumped early as Bill Dale confers with the other officials and then will tell us what the penalty is all about. Have an offside, number 79, Hamilton. That is Glenn Robinson, just reacquired by Hamilton, a former Tiger Cat. Back from Cincinnati, filling in for Drew Taylor, the defensive lineman who has gone down with an injury for this game. Putting Robinson outside a defensive end now, and Wayne Smith, who normally plays that spot, has gone inside the tackle. Hamilton, great against the run. Best against the rush in the CFL in 1980, their defense. First down, five on the penalty call. The Tillyhour has got Dallarive turned too late. Look one way, Russ, turned the other. And it was all a split second too late for him. Now, well, Dallariva a little upset there because he had got in between the linebackers and the defensive backs, and the ball was thrown a little in behind him. And as he turned around, we see Wayne Smith hurt on the field. But you'll see Dallariva got in behind the linebackers, and again, Dottilio got the good protection. The ball was thrown just in behind him. You can see here he was heading towards the sideline and didn't get around fast enough to actually make the catch, and Smith has been hurt. Wayne Smith, who's had... Working on Wayne Smith. Skip Walker uh, was the first player shaken up with this game. Wonder if Tom McKee has any word on on him. We'll well, he, just tw he twisted his ankle. That was what the situation was. They brought him over, took off the low cuts, and uh, put on a a little bit of uh, insurance taping for uh, Skip Walker. Now we understand that the situation with Smith, he was the victim of a crackback block there. And it looks like he was hit on the outside of his right knee. And uh, that's not the way the knee's supposed to bend, you see. And so he's in a little bit of pain, and it doesn't seem to be moving too, uh, with too much fluidity there. No, they'll put Jim Heighton in for him. Well, it was Larry Fole, the uh, left offensive tackle, that got tied up with Wayne Smith. And uh, they were fighting up there on the 
offense and defensive line. Well, it's, he doesn't uh, feel too uh, keen about the idea of walking on that just yet. Here he goes, Here's very happened. gingerly. You can see Wayne Smith in full fighting here, and as they go down in the pileup, that's when he got the knee caught. Couldn't crack an egg the way he's walking. Very gingerly on that sore leg goes Wayne Smith. So Heighton, number 58, does come in to replace him. As the Ticats juggle that defensive line, Jerry Dottilio with all kinds of time there to figure his next play on second and five from the Hamilton 52. Montreal leads one to nothing. Six minutes gone. Skip Walker back in there. Little delay handoff from Dottilio, and he gets nowhere. Might have lost half a yard. Lyle Wozniczynski and James Ramey combined to track him down. It's going to be third down and about five. Well, with the sprint out action, it's a play that Montreal likes to use when they roll out to run that delay draw. They like to get to Tillio with that defense moving and run back against the grain. That time, nothing. Chance here to see Jerry McGrath in his first putt. He has the wind going for him right now. He will kick to Obi Graves and David Shaw standing back at the Hamilton 10-yard line. Low snap to him, but he has it away beautifully. Pumps it down inside the five to Obi Graves. Montreal special team coverage right there, the 10-yard line. Hamilton will be starting deep with eight minutes and 56 seconds to play in this first quarter. Tom Rosance, the backup quarterback. Now the starter, Dave Marler, goes in there to start Hamilton off. And a 48-yard punt it was by the rookie, Jerry McGrath, certainly withstanding playoff final pressure exceptionally well, although he did miss his one field goal attempt. Yeah, you, got, you got to give him a lot of credit there because that wasn't the best snap that came back to him. He had to, you know, he had to waste a precious uh, fraction of a second there getting it away. There's the offensive comparison of three games, all three won by Montreal in the regular season over Hamilton, one of them by a 49 to 10 score. There's the fake to Graves. Pass way over the head of Patterson. They may call some interference out there, though. Number 15, Woodrow Wilson, was the defensive back covering Gord Patterson. And right in that area, while the ball sailed over the receiver's head, a flag went down. Bill Dell, the referee, with that call for us. Flag is in air. Second down. So we have an errant flag. No penalty. It's going to be second down and 10. Hamilton's game plan, obviously, is to throw against this team, Russ. Well, Glenn Weir, the veteran defensive tackle for Montreal, does a good job here with the fake into the middle and then with the sprint out with Marler. Got the good pressure on Marler, forcing him to throw a little early and a little off balance. Marler back into the shotgun formation, standing at the five-yard line. I snap to him, shovels it out to Obi Graves, and he is tracked down to the 14 by Glenn Weir again, number 64, reacting well defensively for Montreal. It's going to be third down and about six, seven yards for Hamilton. A little different play that time with Obi Graves coming up and taking what you exactly call the shovel pass. It's more like a quick middle screen, but Glenn Weir, the veteran, playing at home in there makes a good stop because Graves had lots of room. So Montreal will send Harrison Rhino back just around center field. A couple of yards to the Hamilton side of it for Bernie Ruoff, who got a 36-yarder away despite his average the first time he punted today. Montreal, nearing this midway point of the first quarter, leads at a single point, one to nothing. And it's certainly been the dominant team offensively. Ruoff hangs one high, not too deep. Here's Dickie Harris running into a crowd, and he fumbles the ball, picked up by the Alouettes, however. Dave Dumars was right there to get a lucky Montreal bounce, and they gain a couple of yards at the 44-yard line. That's where the Alouettes will be when play resumes. Dickie Harris down, the Alouette uh, punt returner and great defensive back, took a shot in the side, I think in the rib area, and that's what's bothering him right now. You're absolutely right, Don. Knocked the wind out of him as well as knocking the ball away. He's up, a good sign for the Alouettes. Well, if you run downfield, you're going to see that as he makes the, the reception here, he's going to catch the ball. It's going to be number 17 if we run it ahead. That's really going to take the shot as he gets hung up. We can, right there, there number is. 17 is the one that really laid it to him. And fortunately, 
Dumars was there to pick the ball up, but Jerry Anderson, who's known as a real hitter, was the one who came in as Zambiazzi hung Harris up, and he felt that one. There's always a fear of uh, cracked ribs at a situation like that in cold conditions like this, but he's breathing okay over here at the sidelines, champs. And the Alouettes are alive and breathing at the Hamilton 44-yard line as David Green ambles down to the area of the 36. That'll be good for eight yards. Carl Cornell, the ex-Alouette, ex-Edmonds and Eskimo, number 55, middle linebacker, made the stop. Look for a big game on Hamilton's behalf from the veteran Carl Cornell today. He's had a taste of breakups before where he can smell this as well as anybody. Well, Carl's a little upset that Tom Kuzno's been getting all the ink in the East as far as middle linebackers is concerned. And uh, CC, as they call him around here, isn't prone to be quiet. He'll tell you about it. We've got the direct comparison of the two here today. Second down and two. Skip Walker. Checking off that sprained ankle nicely from the early minutes. Takes it down from Montreal first down to the 30-yard line. Harold Woods, number six, made the tackle. Third in the CFL East behind David Green. And the leader, Richard Crump, was Skip Walker, an outstanding rookie prospect. He's really deadly on kickoff returns as we saw it open this ball game. Dickie Harris up and walking around down here in the dugout area. So he is okay, and at least for now. Nothing left over from that... Tough hit he took. Walker into the meat grinder doesn't get very much. They made a hamburger out of him near the 28-yard line. Lyle Wozniczewski, the first man to meet him, number 76 from defensive end. Give him a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Well, the Hamilton defense is moving around a little bit, Don, especially that defensive front line. And that time they moved after Jerry had called the play and they ran right into the strength of the defense really had no chance of gaining yards. There's Tom Cousin on a great frenzy in the dugout of the Montreal LOS but I think he's just putting on a pair of new booties. The Tilio second down and nine puts it up and the sidelines too far for Nicaraki out of bounds. So Montreal now goes one for four in second down conversion attempts. You've seen them with the ball for almost the entire 10 minutes so far. That's the reason they only have one point so far. Well, that's one of the situations you're going to look back on later if Montreal doesn't win this ball game because Iraqi had the first down well up by the five-yard line, was all alone. Dottilio laid the ball up in the air, and even if Nick had got it, he was out of bounds, and it should have been a completion for the first down at the five or maybe a touchdown. Marco Sincar, the lone receiver in the end zone for the Gerald McGrath field goal attempt, which will come from the 37-yard line of a dead on. He's got this one. The Alouettes have themselves a 4-0 lead as McGrath is one for two in field goal tries today. Our apologies for the video difficulties. Please do not adjust your television set. Our engineers are working on the problem, and we should be back to normal momentarily. Please stand by. Two seconds to play here in the first quarter. Still anybody's Eastern final, but Russ and I have been telling you, and as you've obviously seen, Montreal certainly has had the chances to have acquired more than four. This is Graves and the Montreal defense is won by Montreal. Doug Scott, the left tackle, number 70, met him. And that's one of the backs. Certainly, they've got to primarily key on as far as Hamilton's run goes. This might be a minor thing, but Tom Cousineau with those new shoes didn't like the way they felt as he was on the artificial turf over here. Might affect his mobility for a couple of series here. By the way, Dickie Harris back in the defensive backfield for Montreal. Obviously okay now. Second down eight, Hamilton. Myler, good time, good throw. Reception made by Lee Patterson. First down, the 49-yard line. Hamilton's first first down on the Patterson catch. Right, you talk about your veteran receivers, and they all do the same thing. They come back to get this ball, and you can see the two Montreal players are about even defensively. Dumars and Buono, but Patterson, looking back at that ball, stepped up in front of the plane where they were made the reception for the first down.
sideline pattern. Missed thrown by the quarterback, Marler, for Sincar falling on the play. It'll be incomplete, second down and 10. Marler looks a little tentative today, Russ. He's taking a lot of time to get the plays away, and I don't think he's playing or throwing with the same aggressiveness he did against Toronto. Well, I think the Alouettes maybe got to him a little bit the first series of plays where they blitzed him. He was probably not expecting Montreal to do that because they don't like to blitz their linebackers. They like to play the defense properly, and maybe he's a little concerned as to what they're going to do. He's only one for five in the aerial game today. Three minutes to play in the first quarter. 4 nothing Montreal. He'll put it up again if he can. Patterson goes down. There's a penalty flag interference called on Woodrow Wilson. Hamilton's going to have a first down inside the 30-yard line. We come back right after this. Their best scoring opportunity of this game. Two and a half minutes until quarter time. Montreal leads 4 0. This is Obi Graves, and he's going nowhere. Glenn Weir's got him all wrapped up in back of the line of scrimmage. Hamilton might have lost about a yard. So Montreal very effectively has shut down the run. But now Marler coming on with the pass, even though he got a break on the interference penalty against Wilson a play ago. Wilson who came up to close off that area on Graves in behind Glenn Weir. You're right, Don. He came up and really turned that play back inside. Second down, 11. Knocked away beautifully by Dave Dumar. Marco Sincar was the receiver standing around the 20-yard line, and Dumar has made a good reaction on the play. And of course, Hamilton now to third down, 11. Marler exits and the field goal squad comes on. Well, you talk about the veterans and you talk about rookies, and Sincar here did not come back for the ball. Gave Dumars the chance to step in front of him. See how number 14 got the opportunity yep. to step in front of the receiver? Should never let him do that. If Sincar comes back for it, he has a chance to catch it. The sidewinder, Bernie Ruoff, will try for three from the 36-yard line. Randy Rhino, the lone alouette on the end zone. Ruoff has got it. These teams are only a point apart now. Montreal four, Hamilton three, with a minute 26 until quarter time. Now in the CFL, for our viewers in the United States, of course, the option belongs to the team scored upon. As Ruoff confers to the bench with Payne as to whether or not they go from the 35-yard line or accept a kickoff. Montreal, with a great run-back ability of Skip Walker, will try the kickoff return. Well, I think that has something to do with it, but also they're kicking from their 35-yard line instead of the 45, where they would normally kick after a touchdown. So and yet, Russ, the majority of teams this year simply put the ball in play at the 35 and don't bother with the return. I think the fact that they're kicking into a bit of a wind here is something to do with it, as well as the fact, as you mentioned, Don, that they did have that good run-back on the first kickoff to open the game. Skip Walker has averaged over 25 yards per return this year and opened this one up with a 44-yarder here today. And that really set the tone for the entire first quarter, really. And most of it, seeing Montreal and Hamilton's end of the field. Over to Skip Walker, bouncing away from him near the sidelines. It's going to roll out of bounds. They'll push them back some more. As they will have to repeat from the 30-yard line. And I'm not quite sure what Ruoff is trying to do, but he's lining that ball up on the hash marks to the right-hand side of the field and then kicking the ball dead across the field. Whether they hope to get more people down the field faster with the ball up in the air longer, I'm not sure. But when you're kicking into that wind, you certainly are giving them some advantage catching the ball upfield. It is obviously by design. Yes. I don't know exactly what's going through their, their mind on that. But they do have some purpose behind it as Ruoff will reset it at the 30-yard line and try again. Clock hasn't moved, of course. Still a minute 26 remaining in the first quarter. 4-3, Montreal leading Hamilton. There it is again. This one, though, it's in play for Woodrow Wilson. He finds a center seam, but is hit down quickly as he neared the 50-yard line. Bill Caldwell made the tackle. Let's go down to top. And with me is a man that we thought we might see in this football game, Rufus Crawford. Rufus, what is the situation? Well, I still have a little suspicion of a crack bone in my ankle, but I was practicing pretty well this week, but 
due to the fact that G. Taylor is hurt in uh, the play over and we have to eliminate another import, so we figure we go the way it is. Of course, you just want to save yourself for next week, don't you? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell you, if Hamilton wins it, that'll be an exciting backfield. The proper joins Obi Graves. We've got a long way to go before that's determined. First down from Montreal's 49-yard line. Gatilio throws back against the grain, and good reaction there by Jerry Anderson. Anderson saved that play for Hamilton. There he is, number 17, celebrating it. A good hit to save a lot of yards. Well, there's no question that the Montreal Alouettes feel they can go one way with the sprint and come back against the grain. They've thrown two passes downfield. This time they try the screen, and without just a great play by number 17, Jerry Anderson, Skip Walker would have had a lot of yards because he had a lot of blockers out in front of him. They lose two on that one. It's second down. And 12, the 47-yard line. 21 seconds to play in the first quarter. Dottilio finds Fred Belitnikoff for the big Montreal reception at the Hamilton 37. Under pressure, Dottilio very coolly released that ball right on the money to this man. Well, Belitnikoff did a good job of finding the open area in the zone. Hamilton faked like they were going to blitz, and you could see number 27, Leroy Paul, let Belitnikoff go into the middle, and number 17, Jerry Anderson, who made the great play on the screen, got caught up tight because Dottilio looked like he was going to throw the ball early and didn't throw it. You'll see the pressure now. And just right about there, Anderson makes his move upside, up in front of Blitnikoff, and the catch is made. This should be the final play of quarter one for the Hamilton 37-yard line. It is given to David Green by Attilio, who penetrates the 35 for two to three yards to end the opening 15 minutes. And at the end of the first quarter, the score is Montreal 4 and the Hamilton Tiger Cats 3. Goodalla with a somewhat pained expression as we begin quarter two. Don Chevrier, Russ Jackson, Tom McKee with you for the Eastern Final from Hamilton, Ontario. Jerry Natilio is in the sack from Ben Zambiazzi. The linebackers were coming. Zambiazzi from the right side gave Natilio no chance to get the ball away. And that is a big sack. Well, Walker's lined up as the back on the left side. He took off as soon as the ball was snapped, and Dottilio wisely pulled the ball down. As Zambiazzi came in there, Walker did not check to see if he was coming. He had a free shot at the quarterback. Boy, those defenders coming in there so fast, he's lucky to get the snap. That's the first <laughs> sack of the game, by the way, and it forces the Alouettes out of scoring range into a putting situation with McGrath. He puts it down inside the 10-yard line to Obie Graves, who is not able to get on track. He's up around the 15. Steve Jelly made the stop right there. So Hamilton on the 31-yard punt, the four-yard return start from around the 15-yard line. But that sack drove them out of scoring range. Here in Hamilton, deciding this Eastern champion to play the Edmonton Eskimos. And look at this. Graves, the kind of performance he put on against Toronto, gets up to the 35-yard line where Dickie Harris stopped him. But that will give the Cats some breathing room. Well, you can see he starts off as though he's going to go over that left-hand side of the offensive line. You can see you could have driven a truck through as everybody was collapsed to that side. And Graves, for the first time this afternoon, gets a first down rushing. A 19-yard gain for Graves at the 35 now. There he is, second man through, plows it in for about four, Tom Cusano, middle linebacker number 44 took him down. It's going to be second down and six for Hamilton. That's the story on Graves, coming in late with a sensational performance late season for Hamilton. Now the outstanding defensive player in the East, Tom Cousineau, number 45. You can see how he takes on the offensive blocker. Washchuck number 50, didn't even get a piece of Cousineau as he danced around him and get in on the tackle on Graves. 4-3, Montreal lead. Second down, six. Shotgun set up for Marler. Look out, Dave. He got belted, but he got it away. Intercepted by Woodrow Wilson. Wilson is at the 30-yard line of Hamilton as Marler had to unload as the walls came crumbling down on top of him back there. Junior R.U. was all over the Hamilton quarterback. 
Well, they're trying to hit Patterson, number 71, going down on a straight hook pattern. You can see he's double teamed by Rhino, number 21 and 15, Woodrow Wilson. You should not throw the ball in there when you got a man on each side. That time, Wilson just stepped in front of Patterson, took the ball away from him. Here's the pressure he got. Saw a little stun in there with the tackles. Weir and Scott, number 70. A big turnover for Montreal. Dottilio, it's too low, dropped at the 20-yard line by Fred Boletnikov. Cannot hang on. Here's the man on the double coverage who came up with the ball, Woodrow Wilson, number 15. Well, the one thing the defense hasn't done, they haven't stopped Dottilio from rolling out this afternoon. This time, Boletnikov going downfield. You can see him using his head. He looks to the outside halfway down there. He was open as he came back to that ball and had beaten Leroy Paul. Just couldn't keep the ball in his possession as he went out of bounds. Well, here's the second down conversion situation again for Montreal. They have been successful three times out of seven. There is the passive performance of the Tilio to this point. 50%. He's going to run. He's got some room. The Tilio leans in for a first down across the 20-yard line. Then a late hit from, I think, Jerry Anderson. Or was it the Montreal blocker coming in support? But that flag went down in a hurry as Dottilio was taken down. It all came after the first down. In any event, as Bill Dell will sort it out with the officials and then tell us. Piling on number 17, Hamilton. It was Anderson. Anderson with a late hit. Well, from the low angle, the Montreal offensive line does a great job of piling up Carl Cornell, who was blitzing, and Jerry Dottilio gets to the outside. He turned it upfield, realizing, hey, get the first down. That's the most important thing. And Anderson got called for the late hit right there. Half the distance to the goal line takes it inside the 10. First and goal to goal, Montreal. Little fake to David Green. For Boletnikov, knocked away by Harold Woods. The Tilio looks a lot looser now. Russ talked about how uptight this young quarterback was before the game. He appears to be enjoying himself out there. Well, he's had some success early, Don, and they've been moving the ball. They've been getting good field position offensively, and I think that's helped him a great deal, whereas Marler has been starting back near his own goal line all the time in terms of their offensive Well, you know, and work. as a quarterback, what a difference that makes, oh, especially it helps early on. The beginning of the ball game. Four minutes gone. Second quarter, 4-3 Montreal. Second and goal from inside the 10. Here they come again. Look out. Look out, Jerry. He's way back at the 25-yard line. That big charge of Hamilton, Carl Cornell, Woods all the way from the defensive backfield. Zamb Zambiazzi right there, the Hamilton fans love it. I tell you, when they commit themselves, we got Cornell in here, and you're going to see Zambiazzi come from this side over here. And when they come, they commit themselves 100%. There's no question they are coming, and they just bowl over anything that is in their way. It's just amazing to see how they can come, and this Hamilton defense is coming up with the big plays. And again, Montreal be forced to try a field goal with the score. Montreal 4, Hamilton 3. There is David Green limping uh, quite noticeably as he makes his exit. He was caught in a clip situation on that charge on Dottilio. Well, in that last play, you, you might see that uh, Woods is trying to find a dance partner for tonight, I think, <laughs> as he's holding on to Blitnikov. It's field goal time for McGrath. One for two on the day. This one will come from the 32-yard line. Ash marks right. He makes it, and Montreal's lead is now 7-3. to three. They have reinstated their four-point advantage, which they enjoyed throughout much of the first quarter. First Walker going out, now Green will be attended to for a knee or an ankle that is acting up on him. We have played four and a half minutes in this second quarter of the Sudden Death Eastern Final. You know, next Sunday, the Grey Cup game, of course, produced by CBC. A uh, big day of sports in Canada is the number one rated television show of any in Canada year after year. So we look forward to greeting millions next Sunday afternoon here. 
amount of time Montreal has controlled the ball in the first 20 minutes of this ball game, and they're only ahead by four points because Hamill really hasn't mounted a drive other than that interference call that gave them the opportunity for their field goal. Now that time of possession stat and the offensive yardage won't do you much good unless you have enough points to win. Right now they got a slender four-point lead. The kickoff is not deep. Sincar came up reverse. and gave the ball to David Shaw. On the reverse goes Shaw, 40-yard line. And they finally have him at the 43. So Hamilton tried to get a little bit cute there. That's Hampton, number 62, with the coverage on Shaw. The total run back yardage was 17. But Chuck McMahon did a pretty good job in covering that as well, Tom. In the dugout here, the Montreal LOS, David Green, turned an ankle. It will probably give him more pain and trouble tomorrow morning than it will today, so they just took the old tape off. Put some new tape on, did it a little different way, and he'll be back in the action as soon as he can get there. As soon as they get the football. This is one of Hamilton's better starting spots, the 43-yard line for the entire first half. Second quarter now, five minutes old. Obi Graves. Boy, he's quick. Good coverage by the Alouettes, but the quickness of Graves got him across the 45-yard line, where he has a gain of between four and five. Don, you can tell these two teams have played each other three times before, and in preparing for this game, they certainly have looked at films, because on that particular play, Kyle Brazley, number 37, was right up in the backfield to turn that inside, the same as Woodrow Wilson was on the other side when they tried that quick pitch. So there's keys that they're using out there defensively to certainly turn that offensive up. 35 yards rushing for Graves, only one for seven. Myler passing as they're halfway to a first down with second and five at the 48. There's the first down catch by Gordy Patterson out of bounds at Montreal's 54-yard line. Harold Braisley, number 37, with the coverage on Patterson. Uh, Gord Patterson, who came back and played his first game two weeks ago against the Argonauts and cut two touchdown passes to put Hamilton in first place, does a quick out from his inside slot position to beat Braisley to get that first down, and Hamilton just over center field. Nine minutes until halftime. Seven to three for Montreal, the Eastern Sudden Death Final. Myler, good fake, sprints left. He trips down across the 50-yard line. He will have about eight yards on that play. Both quarterbacks, of course, offer you that dimension, the option of running with the ball to Tilio and Marler. John Payne looking to be only the second coach to coach a team to the Great Cup final in both East and Western conferences. Do you know who the other one was? Let me think for a minute. Jerry Williams. Yes, Calgary Stampeders. Right. The Tiger Cats. Last time Hamilton won the Great Cup. 72, he was the coach here. Quick toss, Patterson steps out of bounds with the help of Woodrow Wilson for a first time at the 40 three yard line well with passes such as the one that Patterson caught on the other side and Patterson on this side you've got to get a little help underneath from those outside linebackers Willie Hampton and Wally Buono are going to have to give those inside safeties Brazley and Wilson a little help otherwise Marla can keep throwing that ball out there the cats haven't gone to John Holland today there's a deep threat number 73 out of your picture now wide right the tackle. Graves drags him down to the 35-yard line. The gain is going to be eight yards. The quick feet of Obi Graves. 43 yards today, and we still have seven and a half minutes to play here in the second quarter. again. He'll be close to a first down. Needed about two and a half yards. They may have to measure for this. We'll find out if we come back right after this pause. The Tiger Cats are third down, about half a yard to go. And John Payne says, let's go for it. Short yardage offense in there. 
expect Marler to handle this all by himself. I tell you, that defensive line is sure not taking a full yard. He does, plows ahead, and appears to have made it. Yeah, they were infringing just a little bit with the anxiety of the situation. John Payne, he's got the worst seat in the house right now, so you can see the anxiety there, but they certainly did get the first down, but John Payne, where he is at the Hamilton bench, has no idea what's happening. Oh. All he can do is wait for the official to indicate first down or turnover. They got it. Ball now at the 32-yard line. Four points. The measure of Montreal's lead at 7 to 3. Six and a half minutes till half time. Whoops. Henderson move. RU came charging. We have red flags all over the field. But the first move was definitely made. As I saw it, Russ, by Leif Patterson of Hamilton. The question is, though, those wide receivers can make a move, but they could get back on side as long as not in the stance, but they'll probably call it. We have an illegal procedure, number 71, Hamilton, five-yard penalty, down repeated. Patterson has been convicted, and in their view, did not get back on top. He can't go forward. He could go laterally, and that time he did go forward, as well as lateral movement to the outside. That's going to make it first down 15 now as the ball is taken back five between the 37 and 38 of the Montreal Alouettes. Hamilton, the most penalized team in the country, has been outdone in that area by Montreal. It is the one call today, the 33-yard pass interference penalty. Hamilton has been penalized more frequently even in this game, 4-1. to one. Obi Graves. Hit out of bounds. Around the 33-yard line. That was Dumar is in pursuit of them, along with big Willie Hampton, Tom. Well, we talked to both head coaches yesterday about having the home field advantage. And there's no doubt about it, it is a home advantage for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, especially when you get a crowd like this near capacity here at Ivor Wynn Stadium, and they're behind the Tiger Cats all the way, no doubt about it. They are a little placid maybe earlier this season and last uh, couple of seasons, but they're football crazy right now. Braves gain four. This is second down 11. Marler, 33% passing today. And he's in the sack. Good penetration by Glenn Weir, who's been all over the Hamilton backfielders all day long. This time gets the first Montreal sack of quarterback Dave Marler. And that is a big one at this point on the field. Well, Glenn Weir right here is going to handle the center wash jock as he comes in. He's just going to push him right back into the quarterback. We've got a three-man rush, and you'll see how he just beats him, and wash jock might have been called for holding there as he got around him. He was beaten so badly, as you illustrated, that all he could possibly do was try to hang on. That could be the defensive play, certainly, of this half. It puts them back. The punter Ruoff standing at his own 50-yard line. Unless he gets a boomer out of scoring range. Not a great kick. Moving up for it is Randy Rhino. And he's taken down around the 13-yard line by Ben Zambiazzi, number 31. Well, Zambiazzi, who does everything so well for Hamilton, plays that outside linebacker spot on the strong side of the field, just keeps good field position with number 37, Carl Brasley, trying to block him and makes a good hit on Randy Rhino. to fight off Carl Cornell unsuccessfully on Montreal's first down play and did not quite make it back to the line of scrimmage. Lost about half a yard. Here's Cornell, wow. 55. Great shot on isolation. He just read this play perfectly and shot the gap as the guard came out to block on the tackle. Cornell was right through the hole and there was no hope for Walker as he got the ball as Cornell was all over him. So he is certainly acquitting himself well in that uh, contest of his, the comparison with Tom Cousineau. <laughs> He says my number is higher. <laughs> Up by 10. The Tilio puts it up high. That could have been dangerous. No one there to intercept for Hamilton. Randy Graham had a shot, but not a good one. The pass was aimed in the area of Fred Boletnikoff, but badly overthrown. But I have been surprised, Don, that Jerry hasn't rolled out a little bit more because Hamilton has yet, has not stopped. 
the rollout situation at all. Zambiazzi playing that zone defense with the rollout. He's going that way as well, and he steps in front of the Litnikoff, and Woods makes sure. So Hamilton should get the ball back in pretty good shape here with three minutes and 40 seconds to go until halftime. Here's the, the charge, and McGrath gets a beautiful spiral away under tremendous pressure. At the 50, here's Graves down to the 46-yard line, and the Cats will go first down from there. That was a good kick, 38 yards, considering what McGrath had to contend with back there. Well, he may be a rookie from Verdun, but I'll tell you, he's learned, as all the kickers do very quickly, how to fake as though you've been hit, because here come the Tiger Cats, and you watch what McGrath does after he gets rid of the ball. Watch this. Oh, somebody touched me. They told me I should fall down. That was Muller made a uh, <laughs> little contact Those guys with don't him. take long to learn, do they? No, first game, usually. <laughs> Hamilton trails by four points, seven to three. They go now from the 46-yard line. Myler spinning out has got all kinds of room. Threw it over the line of scrimmage. It was dropped anyway. Harris was covering Holland the first time they've gone to number 73 Holland today, but the markers definitely were because Marler lost track of where he was. Yeah, he was over the line of scrimmage by at least a yard. He had a notion to go and actually had some room to run the ball. It's an outside pass. Passer has crossed the line of scrimmage. Second down. Might have been better off now in retrospect to have run it. Well, busy, busy, busy is Fred Belitnikov. <laughs> Into the jar, great, out of the legs. He'd be a great short order cook with all that grease he puts on, wouldn't he? Mr. Stickham. Shotgun formation. Second down pattern has been that for Hamilton today. Look at Marler's time. Over the middle. He's got John Holland at the 15-yard line. And the Hamilton fans love it on this brilliant November afternoon. We'll be back. Punt situation. Marler stepped up in the pocket with no pressure. And Holland, who was the wide receiver on the right-hand side, had come right over the middle and take that catch. Stopped by Rhino and Dumars. And the Cats are knocking on the door at the 15-yard line of the Alouettes. It is tipped right to the receiver, but he dropped it. That was Leif Patterson. Could not hang on as a crowd gathered around him. Wilson, Rhino, and Cousineau forced the ball loose. Well, from low angle as Marler tries to hit Graves quickly. The blitz was on. Buono's coming number 39. He reads the blitz immediately, tries to dump it out. Now you got up in the air and tipped that ball. Pedersen had the shot at catching it, but the ball was actually thrown to Graves, number three. Both teams four for ten and second down conversions. Marler's got a lot of room out there. He throws. No good. Leif Patterson again, the target just across the goal line, could not bring it down. So Hamilton is not able to capitalize here on this drive in terms of a touchdown. We'll see that last play again. Now Marler gets to the outside because Gregoire took an inside rush and number 62, Hampton, really hit Marler as he threw that ball. And it was only Hampton who was out there as Gregoire got caught well to the inside. Cousineau, going with the rollout situation, gets out there with the underneath coverage. Rhino right in behind him, getting his hand on the ball. Ruoff will try the field goal from 21 yards away. Brazley jumping up and down there to distract the kicker. To no avail as Ruoff puts it through to bring the Tiger Cats to within a point again at 7-6. We certainly have had abundant offense, enough to score touchdowns, but not have been hung up on the board so far today. Here's the shot by Ruoff again. Well, Woodrow Wilson, number 15, is coming in from the backside. You just see him try and take the angle here. He's at least two or three steps away, but he took the perfect angle for the block. You've got to go in front of that kicker and where the ball will be coming out from where it's being held. You notice Ruoff didn't go down there because he was too intent on watching as to whether he made it or not. He stayed on his feet. Broke the golden rule of the kickers. 7-6 it is with 2.18 until halftime to decide the Eastern representative to meet the Edmonton Eskimos next Sunday in the Grey Cup in Toronto. 
Alvin Skip Walker digs it out for five near the 40-yard line. Lyle Wozniczynski to the tackle on him. Number 76, Hamilton's defensive end of the left side. That's the story here. He is removed down to the final two minutes of the first half. Well, again, Don, I'm again surprised that Jerry isn't putting a little more pressure on the defense by rolling out. He has, has had some success, and they have not contained him. And I think until they do contain a quarterback like that, he should stay with it. You notice David Green back in there. The offensive backfield still favoring that right foot. It's a Rocky in the backfield, but Walker's in the lineup as well. Here's the toss going out to Keith Baker. And Baker's close to a first down. Might have one there. Harold Woods, his numerical counterpart, number six, made the tackle for Hamilton, but it should be a first down for Montreal, exactly 10 yards at the 45. Well, again, the rollout puts the pressure on. We had Wayne Smith trying to get out there and put some pressure on defensively, or I guess it was Muller out there in place of Wayne Smith. And they're trying to put some pressure on, but he's pulled it up and got the first down. There's that little delayed counter, which has been read well by Hamilton again. Skip Walker was the ball carrier, but Ben Zambiazzi, number 31, had that all figured out. Second down, 10. Vitilio for Belitnikov. And Mr. Stickham has got one there. At the 52-yard line, Leroy Paul pulled him down, number 27. Well, Belitnikov going down. He likes to run that outside pattern, but you can see how he comes in behind number 25, works his way into the clear, and takes that pass. Well-delivered ball by Dottilio. Montreal would dearly love to increase their lead, which is only a point. They've got just over a minute to do it here. First down from the 51 and a half yard line. The minute flag is now up. Lots of room. Baker's open. He's got him. Baker trots out of bounds for the first down in his possession at the Hamilton 40 yard line. Well, Glenn Robinson, who's playing his first game on defense for Hamilton, just isn't having any success at trying to contain Dottilio. That time, Dottilio could have run for the first down. He threw it to Baker for the first down. Or they're going to have a measure over there. It's that close, but certainly Jerry can roll to that left almost consistently anytime he wants. I'm going to stick my neck out and say they've got it right now. Let's see. Oh, what do you think, Tom? You're closer. Sure they have. See? Sure they first have. First down. Have Not by much. I think that measurement requested uh, also by Hamilton to try to settle things down a little bit because this is the time when you want to have the ball, as the Alouettes do with the timeout rule. They can call one of the final three minutes. They have it in Hamilton territory, the 41-yard line, a one-point lead, an opportunity to add to it right here. They can get something going. David Green he was standing there as though he was waiting for a bus. And uh, finally, Dottilio got the ball to him, but they weren't fooling Hamilton. Wozniczynski pulled him down after a short gain of maybe a couple. He might have been waiting for a bus stop, but you usually don't wait with your hands like that waiting for the ball. <laughs> Let's try to find his ticket or his change. <laughs> so that's a three-yard gain. Second down and seven. 42 seconds left now. And Dottilio is down again at the 45-yard line. Wozniczynski got him. And that is a there. He's pretty happy about it all, too. That is a very big sack once again at this stage for Hamilton. Now, uh, Roland Mangold is a little upset with himself. The right offensive guard is going to come out. He could try and get the block on Wozniczynski. He just goes right through Mangold right there. And you can see he knocks down Dottilio the first time they got to Dottilio on the roll-up. So now at the 45-yard line, they're going to have to punt it away. And John Payne was motioning to the people who are receiving this punt, if he does kick it in the end zone, bring it out with only about a half a minute left. They're looking for a shorter kick than that, though. There was 22 seconds left. Montreal using up as much time as they can. Good kick. Yep, back around the six-yard line. Shaw slips down and will stay down right there around the five with 10 seconds remaining. A 39-yard punt by McGrath. He simply does not have the range with his swirling wind to attempt the field goal. As you saw, the punt was under 40. So 10 seconds to go. The ball of the Hamilton six-yard line, and it appears as though the Alouettes will come out of the first half with a very shaky and slender one-point lead. 
Well, neither team has been able to come up with that big play offensively when they've been in close. The Alouettes of the two have certainly had more frequent opportunities to score the big one. Myler wisely now is going to just kill the time. Okay, you better not back up too far because he won't be able to just bend down and uh, the clock doesn't start until the ball is snapped. You should know that he's going to have to run two plays. Seven seconds. And now Montreal has called a timeout. For reasons only known to them, apart from maybe confusing Marler and the Cats a little bit, while they break, we will too and return to you right after this. Well, the chips are on the line here. Montreal calling that timeout could effectively force Hamilton to at least punt from the end zone. That's the best reasoning behind that move with seven seconds remaining. Unless they could possibly kill all the time right here in the second down play. Marler undoubtedly would try to ground the ball again. He does and leaves five seconds on the clock. So that's the thinking, Russ. They'll now have to punt it away in this. Uh, no, they don't. Now they can maybe kill off the, the four seconds when they put the ball in play. They'll be yeah, all they'll right. They'll probably run a third down play now. And they're just hoping maybe there'll be a bad snap or something between the center and the quarterback and get a shot at it. Make them use all three downs. Yeah, there goes the time. They'll be okay doing it this way. Bernie Rua. He's going to have to advance a little bit, though. He's <laughs> on the goal line. He can't give up anything. And he goes down there, and that will uh, kill the time effectively in the first half. So we are halfway to a decision on the Eastern champions at the end of the first half. The score is Montreal 7 and Hamilton 6. Representative in that game, here's how the teams compare statistically. Total offense, not a great deal to choose. Five yards in Hamilton's favor. First down's very close. The running game's very close. Passing game, slight edge for Montreal. Team losses, though, that's important. Hamilton has, in key situations, Russ, been able to sack Dottilio twice when Montreal was getting very close to scoring zones. I think that's one of the situations we have to look at in this half because as you look at those statistics, you couldn't get them any closer as well as the score being 7-6 to six for the Alouettes at this time. But I, I felt that Hamilton was able to come up with the big play when they had to and it was because they blitzed their linebackers and it just appeared that Jerry wasn't quite ready for that in terms of what they were going to do when he got in close and two or three times when the Alouettes were in that good scoring position where a touchdown would really put them in the driver's seat Hamilton came with the blitz and got to Dottilio each time. The Hamilton Tiger Cats have been blitzed by the Alouettes as we told you a moment ago in those second halves of three games between the two teams but there's one also important consideration there as Dottilio brings the Alouettes out and that is six weeks ago I don't think this Hamilton team and that's the last time they played before today is the same team we're seeing at the present time in fact I know they are not well there's no question about that that well really neither team is the same because at that time Alouettes were just coming off that big purge mid midway through the season and Dottilio was just being installed as the number one quarterback and he was learning at that time but I think the biggest change for Hamilton has been in their offense with Marler being put in as the number one quarterback. Lemmerman has retired and now he's been carrying the load over the last five or six ball games when these two teams haven't seen each other. So you have to look at Marler as being the biggest difference between the two teams from the three games they played earlier this year. Plus some people that have come back from a horrendous string of injuries on the Hamilton team. The most prominent the last couple of games has been Gordy Patterson number 34 their receiver who was not with this team as we told you before until very late in the season. Well the officials now and the team captains have conferred to determine who's going to kick and receive here to get the second half underway and it should be a good one. They certainly were in scoring situations on many many occasions but neither one could drive it in as the de defenses were very very tough and I'll tell you this much. Either defense is going to have to be awfully tough next weekend when they play the Edmonton Eskimos for the big one, the Grey Cup game at Exhibition Stadium in Toronto next Sunday afternoon. Of course, as you've heard, we'll have it for you on CBC Television, ESPN in the United States, and our good friends in Mexico will be looking in again next weekend, too. We'll have to take some Spanish lessons between now and then, Don. Si, senor. Si. <laughs> you too, Tom. <laughs> non comprende, amigo. Por favor. Well, there have been a couple of big plays in the game by Hamilton, as the folks from Bridgewater, Nova Scotia, are here. And one by Montreal. Their biggest gain was the pass to Bolitnikov. Hamilton's two principal long gainers 
A pass to Holland good for 33 yards and a 21 yard dash by Ovi Graves who really didn't get on track the way he can in that first half. There's something that they uh, don't sell too many of in Mexico as a matter of fact that is the heat blower here in the uh, bench of the Hamilton Tiger Cats Are you folks in Mexico that's to keep us just a little bit warmer it's freezing here right on the nose at about 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero uh, Celsius this afternoon so that's how they try to keep a little bit warm or take the chill off anyway here we go. Hamilton will take the kickoff. Obi Graves at his eight yard line starts it up. And Carl Brazley rustles him down at the Hamilton 30 yard line. So we have very similar conditions weather wise for the Western final yesterday and now this Eastern final here today. Let's just hope it holds for one more week and we get a day like this in Toronto next week for the Great Cup. As you Boy, said, we'll, take we'll be there. We'll take I, know, I know Tom being down there in the sideline. You'll take one more day like this. You betcha. Myler, Patterson, and Pedersen, which sounds like a law firm, had a meeting just before they went out in the field. See if they can get things together in the second half. Graves, a good burst. It'll be a first down. A gain of 14 yards up at the 44. Buono and Rhino made the tackles. Hamilton, you're comparing, started their series in the first half throwing and now come right out running here with their biggest runner, Obi Graves. Now, well, Glenn Weir, number 64, who's almost playing over that center, gets blocked there. He loses his footing. And a good job by Ed Fulton and Ed George on that right side to open up a big hole for Graves. There's the fake Kobe. Here's the rush, and Gregoire has got Marlowe all wrapped up back at the 31 yard line. Number 99, Gabriel Gregoire. Nobody touched him on the way through. Well, Ed George, he just beat him cleanly here. He's going to come from the right side of the screen. There's a little fake, exactly the same play. And you can see how Gregoire went to the inside of George. If they'd given the ball to Graves, he would have got another good game because Gregoire guessed inside and just beat George right to the quarterback. He guessed right. Loss on the play of uh, 11 yards. Second down at 21 now, back of the Hamilton 33, 32 yard line. Steps up for Patterson right in front of him and almost intercepting it was Dickie Harris. Harris thought he had the intercept. And that little jostling between he and Patterson pried the ball free, but it's going to be third down and long for the Hamilton Tiger Cats starting out the second half. A couple of real veterans, Dickie Harris, number 18, and Gord Patterson. Marler moved up into the pocket here, did not get a lot on the ball as he threw it here, a little off balance, and Dickie Harris had the great shot at the interception, and Patterson was the one who yep. almost pulled it out of his hands and made the reception. So Montreal on the punch to get it back at about the same spot. Ruoff standing inside his 20-yard line. Aims for the sidelines. It is to Rhino. Randy Rhino up the sidelines. Look out, he's got one man. It is the punt of Ruoff, but he fell down in front of him. Rhino can't believe it. He had the putter to beat and lost his footing. We'll be back with Montreal on the move right after this. Nonetheless, they have the ball at the 35-yard line of Hamilton. And they give it to Skip Walker up the middle with a pile of tie cats all over him at the 31-yard line. He's got four to five. Jim Height, the principal tackler, number 58. No doubt if he blasted through Ruoff, he was gone into the end zone as a big hole opened up on the sidelines for Rhino on that last play. And I said Joe Hawk goes in for David Green. I wonder how David Green is on the bench. They have had Walker and or Green out different times during this game. Over the middle for Nick Araki, the big tight end. He is taken down in a first down situation for Montreal at the 23-yard line by Randy Graham. Nick Araki, who Coach Joe Scanella said always plays well against Hamilton. That's one of the reasons he got the starting assignment over Chuck McMahon, number 33, makes his first reception of the afternoon. Come on. 
Baker and Bolitnikov both wide left. That's the direction that Dottilio is headed. He cannot get it away. It is ruled down. He was hit by Harold Woods. Came down to the 30-yard line. The play is dead as the knee touched the turf. Well, Don, there is an adjustment that they've made already with the rollout coming to the left. Dottilio has been able to get outside all the time since Wayne Smith has been hurt, and they had to move Glenn Robinson to the outside. They brought Harold Woods, the safety, in for containment here, not the linebacker. He's the one that got in and made the hit on Dottilio. Just got enough of him to make that knee touch right there and deaden that play, but... The man you referred to, Robinson, has been injured as a result of the contact on the last play. Glenn Robinson, back with the Ticats for his first game. He is an obvious pain down there at the present time. Well, we did a game here last year when Glenn Robinson was playing, I believe, his second game with the Tiger Cats and broke his leg right in a goal line stand. Well, I hope yeah. we're not seeing a repeat of that as they are working on the legs. working on his right leg. Let's see what might have happened here. Robinson is number 79. Well, there he is right there. He's the guy that's down on the ground right now, and he's sort of unhappy, I'm sure, because he has not been lucky here in a Tiger Cat uniform over a period of two years. They're still attending to him, as you can see. Going to flex that right leg. Get it back to uh, where it should be. Played about four minutes in this third quarter. The score is unchanged from the half, although Montreal certainly with a glorious scoring opportunity here. He's getting up. Robinson apparently is all right. He trots off. Second down and 17 yards to go for the Alouettes. Tilio, quick pop, complete. Still going is Skip Walker. Walker to the 20-yard line, but he's well short of the first down. He simply recovered about 10 of the yards that uh, Montreal had given up in the previous play, and a bit more. It's going to be third down and eight down. And here comes number 17, Gerald McGrath, with the Alouette field goal team. Well, this football game has certainly put the foot back into it, hasn't it? The goals. Four of them were good, one wide. Here we go with number six. Yes, they have installed about this point time and time again, both clubs in their quest for a major score. You have to start to wonder if any of them have a fake in there at this stage of the game. 27-yarder coming up. And through from Jerry McGrath. So Montreal, off and on all day, is at a four-point lead that is on right now as they lead by a score of 10-6 over the Hamilton Tiger Cats with about five minutes gone here in this third quarter at Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton. Now, Don, the way this game is going, it looks like it could go right down to the last play as the semifinal game between Ottawa and Montreal did. Neither team being able to put that consistent march together, and I think it just shows you what type of defensive teams both these clubs have. Russ, this looks like one of those one-play games could just bust it all wide open. That's right. Rhino almost had the play going for him a few moments ago when he slipped in front of Rua. Here's Obi Graves. And it was Brazley who got a piece of him enough to slow him and then get some help. They limit the game to about three and a half yards. Boy, Brazley and Wilson, the two inside safeties for Montreal, have been doing an excellent job all afternoon of reading that short pitch to Graves. They had a lot of success against Toronto with that two weeks ago. They have been right up in that defense, in the offensive backfield, every time they've had that pitch. Graves now has 66 yards and 11 carries for Hamilton today. Second down and six and a half. being covered by Woodrow Wilson at center field. Really, you can't give a quarterback much more time than they gave Myler there. Well, the entire defensive line just sat on the line of scrimmage. It was almost like they were looking for a drop play or a screen pass or something different, and everybody seemed to be moving at the wrong time. The whole play seemed to be mixed up offensively and defensively. Well, 
the big Tiger Cat, the biggest of them all, Harold Ballard, the club owner, with Ralph Sazio there in the box. Not enjoying entirely what he's seen so far, but his team's still in it. Ruoff hangs one very high. The special teams are right down on top of the receiver with no regard for him whatsoever. And they throw flags immediately. But Randy Rhino, who is trying to catch that ball, is hurt. He got a shot right in the face, it appeared. John Priestner, number 36, was right down there. I'm not sure whether it hit him on the head or where that ball hit, but certainly there'll be a no yards penalty. Begin to wonder if they consider unnecessary roughness on this more than just no yards. Let's see. You can see John Priestner, number 36. It did hit him right on the back of the helmet, so you might say that's no yards. Rhino still being attended to. He certainly felt that as Priestner's helmet came right into his face. Stunned for a moment there. And no yards, number 36. 36 is Priestner, so there will be a walk in the direction of the Hamilton goal line for the no yards infraction. The ball will come all the way up to the 49 yard line of Montreal. That's where they'll scrimmage first down. Well, let's check that. They're going up a little higher. 52 yard line now is where they position. Must have been a roughing call, Don, not I think a no it yards was. call. They announced no yards. They seem to march out 15 so, yards. That's what it looked like. Here's Randy Rhino as he reaches the sideline here, and uh, he's still pretty groggy. He has a tough time walking that straight line right now, as you can see. Yeah, well, it's 50 now, of course, for no yards, and Rhino paid dearly for that one. At the 52 yard line, first down for Montreal. Their lead is 10 to 6. Right. I don't know if you can see it or not, but Rhino has had a cut under his chin. Not surprised. Joe Hocko taken down by Carl Cornell. Hocko is in for David Green. Well, number 76, Lyle Wasnesensky, does a good job now taking on the offensive guard, Matt Gold, coming out there, and he fights to the inside, turning Hocko right into Cornell. Cornell and Waz Lisinski, two of the bright lights for Hamilton. Defensively, along with Ben Zambiazzi today. Second down, nine. A flag is thrown, holding, and it's overthrown. Keith Baker has it sail over his head with Graham covering him, but no question there. Referee Bill Dell wisely spotted holding back there in the Alouette backfield. That could have been Doug Payton, number 61, holding Lyle Wasnesensky as he tried to push him to the outside, but we'll hear from Bill Dell. Holding number 58, decline. That was actually Roland Mango. He's trying to hang on to Ramey, who is coming on strong on the quarterback. They decline that because it makes it third down and nine and forces Montreal to punt right here. Shaw's back for Graves, standing at the 15. Good punt by McGrath. It's coming down to Dave Shaw at the 10-yard line. And he doesn't get far. He was rocked by Willie Hampton and Tom Cousineau, shy of the 15-yard line. A 48-yard punt by Jerry McGrath. That's the score. We'll have more after this. Quite a defensive struggle here at Iverwind Stadium, even more pronounced with the fact that David looks as if he may be gone for the rest of this game. An Achilles tendon injury is the problem. Not fully diagnosed as yet, but obviously he's in pain. Doesn't look as if he'll play anymore. Rhino's out for Montreal. Jelly's in for him. Into a stack goes Obi Graves, not getting very much. Perhaps a couple of yards in the area of the 17-yard line. So injuries to key personnel will have a lot to say about the outcome here today. Right now, Montreal is suffering in that capacity. There's Steve Jelly, young man we mentioned, number 27, who's in for Rhino at the present time. He's played a fair bit this year, too. When they let Burroughs go out to Calgary, he played a lot when they had the other defensive linemen as an import. Myler's toss to Harlan right on the money. It'll be first down Hamilton to the 27-yard line. Don, that has to be one of the best.
this closet and Wilder has thrown all afternoon. He really got out to the outside on the rollout to the right with Graves leading him there, but he had something on that ball and he really threw it with authority. Graves forcing Weir to step around him. Marler stepped up and really delivered that. John Payne's team trails by four. That's the first completion this half. Makes a first down Hamilton from the 27 yard line. Porkendale comes up to block as they give the ball to O.B. Graves. 45 yard line, first down again. Wilson finally caught up with the fleet footed O.B. Graves. Well, and I'll tell you, everyone in the ballpark knew that Graves was going to get that ball, but Corkendale had got in motion to the left. Graves went early, stood there, waited for the ball, still got the big yards. He's going to be waiting here for the ball. He's just standing out there. You can see the room he had there. No white sweater anywhere. Three quick first downs in a row for Hamilton. It is picked up by, let's see, Hamilton Tiger Cats have it. Ooh, that could have been tough right there at the 45 yard line. They lost that one. Well, you talk about big plays that can happen here, but Corkendale, who hasn't carried the ball very much, and that really looked like it was Marler's fault. He wasn't even yeah. looking at McCorkendale when he handed off. He was just reaching back and looking the other way, and I don't think he ever made contact with McCorkendale in terms of the handout pocket. Never got it properly at all. Obi Graves. Pounce back on that football to save it for Hamilton. It's second down and ten. Myler will now step up into the arms of Junior R.U. who flings him down unceremoniously at the 41-yard line to lose four more. So Montreal's defensive pressure continues here. Myler. And the Cats have trouble getting on track. Well, Willie Martin was really upset. You watched Joe Scannell on the sideline, and he's got to be getting a little nervous now as the time marches down with the four-point lead, knowing that Brakes could decide this particular ball game and hoping they go his way. But Willie Martin had to be upset. He did a good job of blocking Ayu initially, and then Marler moved right up to where Martin had blocked Ayu. There's good news for Montreal fans. Randy Rhino's back in on this punt return with Dickie Harris. Rua punts it away. Harris, a flag is thrown. Another no yards indication against the Cats near the 40 yard line. So Montreal will move it up again. Tom? With me now, David Green. And David, you've got to be an unhappy man right now. No yeah, yards, I mean, I'm looking 55, forward to uh, having a good game for What is the diagnosis on the ankle? Well, I can't put a lot of weight, you know, on my uh, right ankle. You know, they say it was my Achilles. And how serious would it be? Any idea? Well, it don't seem to be too serious, you know, it's just that I can't come out of the block to, you know, like I normally do. Just can't spring out of there, eh? It's a defensive struggle. Yeah, it seems to, it seems to be. If Joe Hocko in for Green, he is said wide left. The penalty against Fidel for no yards has the Alouettes for 53. Here's the Tilio Nicaraki trying to one-hand the ball. In a maze of cap defenders, Anderson, Leroy Paul all around him and could not do it. Now that was a one receiver pattern. It was a fake bootleg. There was a fake to the left hand side. And Dottilio went to the right, but he got good pressure from the Tiger Cat defense. And Iraqi was the only receiver downfield. Well covered, but almost came up with a great catch. Gave it quite a shot. Second down from the 53 yard line. Come on, David. Come on, David. And of course, they're not all Hamilton fans here today. Obviously, this guy is cheering for. Up. For Dano Riva, and he was hit hard by Randy Graham as he fought for the ball unsuccessfully. So Montreal fails to move it as we look one more time. Well, Kyle Cornell is coming on the blitz along with all the other linebackers. Dottilio read it well, tried to get the ball downfield, but Randy Graham did a good job of stripping the ball from the receiver. Obi Graves. Dave Shaw inside the 20-yard line. Here they come. 
just got it away, and a good one it is, too. McGrath really putting well under pressure today. Shaw getting away from Hocko. And then dragged out of bounds by Nicaraki at the 23-yard line. It set Hamilton up there after a 41-yard punt by McGrath. The return was eight. We have three minutes and 20 seconds until the end of the third quarter. John Payne hoping that this quarter ends in a hurry because they did choose to give Montreal the win. What win there is coming out of the east end of the stadium for the third quarter. And they've had their backs to the wall most of this quarter. But John hoping they can get out of this quarter with only that four-point deficit. No more anyway. Yes, so far they have limited the LOS to the field goal of three points, which has increased their lead to 10 to 6 over Hamilton. But conversely, Hamilton has had to work from deep in their own end much of this quarter whenever they have had the ball. Marler is rocked by Gregoire and has no one to throw to. Harlan cut in. The ball went out. It'll be second down and ten. Zooms here with just under three minutes to play in the third quarter from Hamilton. Mid-November, we certainly cannot complain about the weather conditions here today. Just around the freezing mark, brilliant blue sky over Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton. Can you guys, you yes, guys see the clock up there? There's two minutes and 77 seconds <laughs> left in the third quarter. It's That's 317. I guess it is. Or 217. <laughs> or oh, they made a mistake. <laughs> now it's 274 now. I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, we'll get that straightened out. Second down, the 23-yard line, and 10 to go for Hamilton. Here comes Gregoire and Weir and are you and the ball came loose but it goes to Hamilton with Marler taking a loss back near the 17 yard line. John Payne has to be concerned because Montreal is getting more and more aggressive as time goes on and here's a man shaken up who is a big part of Montreal's defensive charge Glenn Weir. Uh, junior IU and Willie Martin, number 66 for Hamilton, have had a pretty good afternoon at trying to get to each other. This time, Martin tries to force him deep, does a pretty good job. The ball was not delivered as Marler was forced out of the pocket, and IU was there along with Weir and the rest of the defensive line. Scott Gregoire putting on some pretty good pressure. Well, Weir appears to be all right, up and on his way across to the Montreal bench. So Hamilton again forced to give it up via the punt on third down and 16. Ruoff will hit it from just outside the five yard line. Alouettes have got Harrison Rhino stationed at about center field. Here's the charge and it's partially blocked. It's a free ball in there. At the 13 yard line. Montreal first down. Willie Martin recovered it for Hamilton. Of course, they haven't got the yards there. Woodrow Wilson, I think, is the man who got through to block right. much of it. Well, you're going to see some pressure come from over this way, and they're going to come in here and do a pretty good job of getting some pressure on that. Ruoff, number 10. You got them holding up, and then Woodrow Wilson, number 15, comes from that side, and he just reached out. He didn't sacrifice his body or anything to block that ball. He just got lucky reaching out with his right hand and tipped the ball. Sacrificed one hand and got the job done. 14-yard line. Montreal first down. Gattilio throws back into the middle incomplete. Could have been intercepted down there. Keith Baker not really in the immediate area of the pass. Well, the overall area he was, but uh, the ball was in behind him. Errol Woods had a possible shot at the intercept, and so it becomes second down. Woodrow Wilson has given Montreal this chance to widen their lead. He has had an interception today. He's had an interference penalty. Involved in a big interference penalty, and now this. 147 until three-quarter time. Let's see if they go right back to Baker. They do. He dropped the ball. And again, ever so close to, but not good enough for a touchdown. This drive and the opportunity for the Alouettes. But you look at the fact that the Montreal Alouettes adjusted again because 
in the first half when they got in these positions. Dottilio tried to drop straight back, and they brought the blitz on him, and they got to him a few times. Now he's rolling out with the ball. He had Baker. The ball was thrown perfectly. Baker just didn't catch it. Nobody in his way. He looked downfield for Graham, number 14, before he got the ball. Had him right in the hands. Field goal again, 21-yard line. Pass marks left for Jerry McGrath. And he's got it. He's been good at everything since he missed his first one today early in the game. So now the three points means the Alouettes have a converted touchdown lead, even though nobody has scored a converted touchdown today. Well, Belenikoff on that last play puts a great move on Leroy Paul, number 27. And you can see how alone he was in the end zone. But the ball had already been delivered to number six, Keith Baker. And if Jerry had been able to hang on to it just a fraction of a second longer, he could have thrown to Belenikoff with his stick and probably would have hung on to it. Sure would have. 13-6 Montreal now. 1-12 left in the third quarter. From the 35, the Cats select to take it. it out for Holland and he makes a catch at the 40 yard line with Harris charging up from behind on him. There's no doubt about it. This has been a very frustrating afternoon for both offenses of Montreal and Hamilton but it seems to be telling the tale more on Marler. David Marler the young man really only in his rookie year and a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. Last time the offense came off the field he was really down and they had to pump him up a little bit before he went back out there now. Tatilio, a little more experience. Only six for 18, Marler is. That was good for six yards. This is second and four. He's got a lot of room. He fumbles the ball. Waschuk, the center, recovered it for him. And he has the first down right there at the 46-yard line. Well, Tom Cousineau does a good job here of getting back into the zone now. He's covering number 20, McCorkendale, coming out. But then as the quarterback runs, he squares away, gets in on the tackle. The ball was stripped away from Marler. With Junior Ayu doing that. Cousineau comes up, but it's Ayu who stripped the ball. Last shot recovering. So first down, Hamilton on the 46-yard line. This should be the final play of this third quarter. Obi Graves slips the snow He has got some room. 30 yard line. Graves out of bounds inside the 10. Dave Dumars finally caught up with him, but the Cats are on the move in the final play of the third quarter. Three quarters over the score. Montreal 13, Hamlet 6. Lives on. I'm cruising on the middle line. Has to keep containment here, and Waschuk comes out number 50. You can see the offensive center got position on Cousineau. Graves cut off that block and got the 55 yards. Down to the nine yard line to begin the fourth quarter with a Hamilton first down. Here's Myler in the corner for Patterson out of bounds at the three. Obi Graves today is over 140 yards rushing. Well, Patterson just running that quick out. It's a little cross pattern with Gordy Patterson. Patterson trying to maybe pick off his man. Not quite legal, but you do it a lot down near the goal line when you got man-to-man -man coverage. Second down, just outside the three-yard line. Touchdown! Gordy Patterson. sounds for the first time, the first touchdown of the day. Well, a good call this time. Patterson, who had run an in-cut the previous time, stayed to the outside, and look how wide open he was, because I'm sure the defenders were probably looking for the same crossing pattern they got before. That time, he faked like he was coming to the inside, the defender stayed on the inside, and he was all alone in the corner of the end zone. The last two games, Hamilton's only touchdowns have been Marler to Patterson. Two, November 2nd, and now this one today. Which will tie it if Ruoff can convert. He does. And the Easter 
championship is all tied up at 13. With a long way to go, virtually all the fourth quarter remaining. Wow, you'll see the touchdown again. Patterson is starting from the inside. See the way he came to the inside last time. This time he went to the outside. And the outside receiver did a great job of sort of getting in the way of the defender. And if you can do it, get away with it. It's a great play. And this Hamilton crowd has come alive. Thirteen to thirteen. I never said it would be close, and indeed it is into the final quarter. And you have to think that Hamilton has that win, the favoring win behind them in this last quarter. Skip Walker inside his five-yard line starts up. Found an opening, was taken down near the 28-yard line by Doug Reddle, number 67. A 25-yard run back, but O.B. Graves, number three, is number one in Hamilton right now because the final play of the third quarter, he ignited the Tiger Cats with that burst of 55 yards inside the 10, and then Marler worked them in from there. Walker forgot the football. Hamilton has it inside the 30-yard line. A bad exchange from the Teleota Walker. And Lyle Wozniczewski, there he is, is going to keep the ball. Wow, Wozniczewski, who's been playing that defensive end spot, sometimes they call him Lyle Alphabet because he's got so many letters in the back of his jersey was right there as he came down the line. The ball squirted out, and both he and number 68, James Ramey, had a shot at that ball, along with Carl Cornell. And we got a big break for the Tiger Cats with that momentum shifting, but the ball never getting from Dottilio to Walker. No. But the news is all is not all good for the Hamilton Tiger Cats right now, because if you see the turnovers, Ben Zambiazzi, Wozniczewski is at the sidelines. He's happy. Zambiazzi has been injured and is being attended to between the 30 and the 35-yard line. There he is. The Cats could ill afford to lose a man of his stature defensively. And I also think that you can bet that they'll take as long as possible with Zambiazzi to give Marler the opportunity to collect his thoughts. He's going back in here a little sooner than he expected. And uh, Joe Scanella has just seen his football life flash before his eyes in the last three minutes here. It's turned so dramatically and so quickly. Well, Zambiazzi is up now as Nick Arachne's walking up that sideline, and he seems to be pretty good. He's walking a little gingerly, but I'm sure he'll be back. But you've got to look at that big run on the last play of the third quarter by Graves, and then Hamilton scoring the touchdown, and then bang, they get this turnover. If they can convert here, then it's really going to put the pressure on the other way to offense. an eye on Zambiazzi. Watch what happens here as Hamilton has first down at the 29-yard line of Montreal. A tie game at 13. O.B. Graves hit down at the 25-yard line by Dickey Harris. Simply clipped the feet out from under him. The legs and limits the game to about three and a half yards. But he is so dangerous every time he puts his hands on the football. Obi was saying yesterday he likes Canada, likes the CFL. There's John Payne, the tension reflected there in his face. He just wishes it wasn't quite so cold. Well, Obi hasn't seen previous years for the Eastern Final. These conditions aren't half bad. A lot of time again for Myler. And he overthrew his receiver, led him too far down the sidelines, his back McCorkendale. There really was no reason for that, Russ. 
Well, one of the problems was that Marler really didn't set up to throw that ball. He was moving forward and threw out to the side of McCorkendale was wide open and carried that ball in a long way. Just didn't set up. Another in a series of missed conversion opportunities inside the 35-yard line that have plagued both these teams today. Only once has anybody capitalized. That was Hamilton, of course. Here's Bernie Ruoff from 32 yards away. His bid to give the Tiger Cats the lead. Something they haven't had all day. But they've got it now. It is Hamilton on top by three points at 16 to 13. With 12 and a half minutes remaining. We'll take a pause right now. ESPN. Hamilton kickoff. They lead 16 to 13. This is Alvin Skip Walker. Look out. Walker up near the 50-yard line. Time and time again is an instinct for the slightest opening. Russ and pursues it beautifully. Well, I think one of the things, Ruoff is not kicking that ball up in the air. He's kicking at his line drive, and he's driving it across field, as we talked about. Walker's getting lots of running room. He's getting a good start up field before any Hamilton people are down there. 38 yep. yards that time, Tom. Hamilton Tiger Cats, 12 minutes and 20 seconds away from meeting the Edmonton Eskimos in the Grey Cup of 1980. Ben Zambiazzi, I think he'd have to have his leg pulled right up to stay out of this ball game, but it's up to the defense now for the Tiger Cats. Zambiazzi. The offense, of course, for the Alouettes. Here they go. He's hurting, but he's in there. Lots of time for the Tilio. Puts it up for a Rocky. And Anderson intercepts the ball. It'll be Hamilton first down. here. He rolled out to the right after being forced out of the pocket. Threw the ball down to Iraq. You've gone down the sideline. Anderson does a good job. They both have a shot at it, but he got possession just before he stepped out of bounds. One more look at it. Ramey does a good job of pursuing here and gets a pretty good hit on Detelio, and he doesn't know it's intercepted yet. Anderson just inbounds on the intercept at the 34-yard line of Hamilton. They lead 16-13. Obi Graves hit by Brazley, then by Buono, and they hold him to about the 38-yard line. Well, the gain is going to be about four. Well, Joe Scanella, very, very concerned now. His team's only down by three points, but there's no doubt with these turnovers, the momentum is swung over to Hamilton. And the last turnover supplied by this man, Jerry Anderson. This is second and six from the 38. Myler gets the charge and goes into the sack. Back at the 28-yard line, Tom Cousineau. The NFL's top draft choice. Ohio State All-American coming through as he has so often during the season with a big play for Montreal right there. Well, you'll see number 45, Tom Cousineau, who's going to come in here. And Obi Graves will take him on initially. It's McCorkendale. you got to stay with him. You can't let him go because there's nobody else back there to block him. You're the last line of defense. Well, the defenses have been all over the quarterbacks today. Nine sacks so far. They lay off and let Ruoff punt it. Hangs up in the swirling wind for Harris, and he runs himself out of bounds. The 47-yard line. That'll be Montreal's point of origination on this series of plays. A 37-yard punt by Ruoff. Ten minutes and 41 seconds left in regulation time. 60 to 13 for Hamilton. And at this stage... Huey Campbell and the Eskimos can't really make any definite plans, not for another half hour or so, except their travel plans. Skip Walker knifing through with Zambiazzi, so he's back at five form again to limit Walker to about a one-yard advance. 
Don, you can see the hype coming with that Hamilton defense right now as they are attacking the Montreal offense. It seems a little sluggish. And the Hamilton team, both ends of it, offense and defense, can thank Obi Graves for much of this emotion that's being generated right now. And, of course, the two turnovers they picked up after that. And the home crowd is helping. Boy, they've come to life. 150 yards for Graves and 49 total rushing for Montreal today. Here's Dottilia overthrowing his receiver who was bumped down there. It was Keith Baker running into David Shaw, and the ball simply sailed over their heads. Well, Baker goes downfield, tries a little hook into the middle. The ball is well thrown over top of his head as Dottilio. The ball gets away. Shaw coming in there trying to time it perfectly. If he's going up to catch it, he's going to wear a helmet in the middle of his back. Dottilio has had trouble with the aerial game the last six times. 0 for 6, as a matter of fact, of the stretch. Shaw's back with Graves. The Alouettes will punt it down on third down, eight and a half. McGrath has it down to Dave Shaw. And Shaw breaks out of the pack. Dave Shaw with his great speed being chased by Brazley at the 30-yard line. And he runs out of gas at the 17th. That may be the game breaker right there by Dave Shaw. A 59-yard punt return for Hamilton. Ron David Shaw pulls it out here, but they're all was a clipping call. I'm not sure whether we're going to see it, but as he breaks out here, right there on Iraqi, it looked like there might have been a clip. He did not push him hard enough. Nobody saw it. Nobody called it. But Shaw broke out. Unfortunately for the Alouettes, somebody with some speed, Brazley, number 37, with the two of them meeting each other, was there to catch him. But this could be a ball game right now as David Shaw makes the big punt return. First down between the 16 and the 17 of Montreal. It's been all Hamilton since the last play of the third quarter. And here's the man who got them started, Obi Graves, with a gain of two, grabbed by Brazley, just inside the 15-yard line. his punt return number 67 is hitting him on the back and he was fortunate he did not get called for clipping at that time Dave Shaw who's done better 102 yards but not in a more meaningful situation than the punt return he just ran for 59 1972 the last Grey Cup won by Hamilton right here in Hamilton Chuck Ealy was the quarterback. 13-10 was the score. Marler for Gordy Patterson out of bounds. First down inside the five. Just a good catch by Gordy Patterson with Randy Rhino all over his back. You just can't do it any better. Marler goes back. He's getting the good protection. No blitz. Mark does a pretty good job of staying with IU, but there he is. But Rhino is right there. You can't get better pass protection. The concentration of Patterson, again, making the big catch. Nice day for a party. Well, it will be if Hamilton wins. Graves the fake. Marler keeping, dumps it off. Touchdown board Patterson. And they're going crazy here in Hamilton. Look at John. A big touchdown scored right there. The Marlin Patterson combination coming through again. And Dave Shaw started the whole thing in motion with his 59-yard punt return. Now, the point after by Bernie Ruach. He's got it. And the Tiger Cats suddenly have got themselves a 10-point lead. They lead 23-13, seven and a half minutes to play. 
does a good job as he goes out to the right from here. He's going to give a little hand fake in there to the tailback going in, and then he sprints it. He is really going, but will he have to number 62 with his great speed as a chance of cutting him off? And if he tried to turn that upfield, he never would have got into the end zone. He released it perfectly to Patterson, and he just made a great catch. Yeah, that catch by Patterson was something. His fourth touchdown in the last two games after missing an entire season. Ten points, Hamilton's lead. Here's Skip Walker. Got to watch him on these kickoff returns. Now they've got him all turned around and have it at the 20-yard line. The tie Cats are flying right now. Boy, and you can anticipate when that defense walks on the field. You can just see John Payne tasting it right now. When that defense comes on there, they know exactly what Jerry Dottilio has to do, and he has not been doing it well in this second half, and that's throw the ball. Hamilton has not beaten Montreal all season. They did not beat them until the latter part of the third quarter, but they have simply overwhelmed them ever since. Dottilio's only one for seven in the entire second half with just over seven minutes to play. Zambiazzi, and then he is hit down to the 23-yard line by Lyle Wozniacki, number 76. Well, Walker lined up here as a wing back, tries to fake that he's blocking Wozniacki, and then try and get out on a screen as Dottilio tried to roll to the left. But Zambiazzi and that, not cool now. They're looking for everything out there. They know he has to throw the ball, and Zambiazzi did the right thing. He got to the outside of Walker and forced him back inside where he knew he had some help. Joe Scanella, deeply concerned right now. They need a big play to get them back into it. And it goes through the hands of the sure-handed receiver, Fred Bullock for Cuff. You don't see him do that very often. Well, that's the best defense Hamill can have, is if the element receivers won't hang on to the passes when they're wide open like that. 6-19 to play, and... Montreal will punt it back to Hamilton. Under pressure, it is away. Graves lunging for the catch on the run. Somewhat dangerous move on his part. He got away with it. And the Tiger Cats will have the ball at the Montreal 47-yard line. Well, the last play on isolation, you see Bolitnikov going down and just how wide open he was as Dottilio got the good protection. But it doesn't matter how wide open you are if you don't catch the ball. Don, I have to agree with you that Obi Graves rather fortunate on that. He could have worn some goat horns. That time. He really had to reach to catch that ball. Yes, he did. An unnecessary risk at this stage, too. But he got away with it. McCorkendale takes it down to about the 42-yard line. The whole stadium looking for Obi Graves, and he finally went to McCorkendale. The gain is about six yards. Five, make it. Woodrow Wilson to Tom Cousineau. Working defensively. Well, Hamilton has the capability of killing a lot of time, as we saw against Toronto a couple of weeks ago with the running of Obi Graves and McCorkendale. Let's see if they elect to do that now or press for additional points. They lead by 10, just over five minutes to play. I'd like to do a bit of each. Intercepted Woodrow Wilson across center field into the Hamilton 43 yard line. The first break for the Alouettes really in this half. Hamilton controlling play so wild, grinding it out, and then one mistake here by Marler. Well, Marler trying to throw that out now. Wilson got right out there with the intended receiver and stepped in front of him and took the ball back upfield. Craig Lebet was the intended receiver, number 75. Montreal between the 43 and 44 of Hamilton. Four minutes and 50 seconds to play. The 
Montilio will run the ball. Falls at the 40-yard line. Paco throwing a block on Zambiazzi ahead of him. And after all that, the gain is only going to be about three and a half yards. Have to look at that interception that Wilson just had and think of the pressure it's now put on the Hamilton defense because a field goal, even a field goal at this time, will put Montreal in that position where a big play can get them back to a tie. To get back in the game, they've got to come out of this drive with something. Here's the big second down play. Hocko is cut down well short of the first down by Jerry Anderson. He leaves them around four yards. for Joe yes, Scanella sir. kicking into that wind will they be able to kick it far enough for a field goal or will they go for they're, it on a third down I think they're going to go for it Russ that was the indication we had from Scanella now they're putting all the eggs in this play right here I think yeah this could decide it right here we'll go a long way in that direction three and a half minutes left the Hamilton crowd chance defense Dottilio for Della Riva overthrew it it's Hamilton ball at the 37-yard line. And that might be the Eastern Championship right there. Well, it was one of those passes that was just thrown up, and really, Della Riva didn't look for it. No Hamilton defender was looking for it. It was one of those things. There was only one way to go with it, but it looked initially like he wanted to throw to the back from the other backfield. He's looking immediately to his left in the flat. Now he looks downfield, and nobody downfield looked like they were looking for the ball, the defenders or the receiver. Well, he didn't need to throw it that far. He needed four yards on the play. He chose to throw it downfield about 25. I would think that Marler might not put the ball in the air again. <laughs> not likely. Now with Obi Graves coming out of his backfield with it. Graves getting himself about four across the 40-yard line. We've got two minutes and 53 seconds left of the Eastern Final. Don't go away. We'll be back. Well, I'll tell you, Joe Scudella and Jerry Dottilio would love to have that third down play back again. But Hamilton has the ball back again at the 42-yard line. Clock ticking down to two minutes and 45 seconds. Hamilton on top by 10, 23 to 13. Marler sprints out of there with it. And gets a lot of yardage. He lost the ball. They got it back at the 42-yard line of Montreal. Well, Russ said it. You won't see him put it up, certainly where they were. You might now, but the way they can run out of there, it may be totally unnecessary to pass. Well, he came out of there with no intention of throwing that ball. It was a straight spread out. He was going to run and just try and get the first down. It turned into a 25-yard gain as he got to the outside very quickly. And as he turned it upfield, both McCorkendale and Graves, and look at Graves go ahead there and get that block for him. Here's Graves again. He got cut down early that time in behind the line of scrimmage. Good work by Gregoire. It was taken down. We got enough of Graves to knock him down. Well, Marler, who looked so tense a few minutes ago, looks pretty relaxed right now with good reason. Well, Gregoire, Craig LeBet is in there for blocking purposes now in place to leave Pedersen. You can see Gregoire do a good job of shedding the block and getting in front of Graves. They lost a yard. It's second down 11, but the clock is under two minutes now at 153. Myler sprints to the left side. Runs into Tom Cousineau, who denies him the first down. They'll be well short by about five with third down coming up. And the Hamilton punting team will come on. Well, the question will be at a punt, or will it be a field goal attempt? But you've got to try and get a point right here. You wouldn't want to have a field goal blocked either in this situation. Well, he's going to punt that ball, and a point is very important here because it means, the, means that they would have to get two touchdowns in order to beat you. Unless they get a two-point conversion. <laughs> Ruach will have to hit this a good 50 yards to reach the end zone. Harris and Rhino go back about three or four yards. You know the Alouettes are coming. 
angles it in the corner, five yards deep for Harris. He fires it or tries to way over here to Rhino, and he's clobbered with one point. Harold Woods led that all the way, and flattened Randy Rhino. A 42-yard punt by Ruoff results in a single point, and Russ suggested a very big one because now the Hamilton lead is 11. We'll be going to the winning locker room, the way it looks right now, the one that has the black and the gold colors on the door. Russ Jackson will be going down there, so stay with us for all the post-game celebrations here in this Eastern Championship game. 1-18 remaining. Montreal trailing by 11 at the 35-yard line as a first down. And Attilio has more grief on his hands back at the 22-yard line. While Wozniczynski and Jim Heighton both there. He turned one way, turned the other, and saw nothing but Hamilton jerseys. The Thai Cats have this one in the bag, it would appear, as they have been attacking Montreal relentlessly throughout this fourth quarter. That's the Hamilton Spectator which will have a similar headline tomorrow. That one in 1972, the morning after Hamilton beat Saskatchewan to win the 1972 Grey Cup right here. We now have a minute of playing time remaining. And this is Skip Walker getting inside Jerry Anderson. And up to the 35-yard line, but still well shy of the first down. That was second down and 22. Walker got back about 13 of those yards. Ben Zambiazzi finally contained it. It's going to be third down and nine with 50 seconds remaining. And I think right about now that Mr. Campbell and the Eskimos can get out their film on the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Over the middle it goes to Nick Araki. Cronell has him at the 45-yard line. It will be very close to a first down. put that ball down this could be a heartbreaker for Montreal I think they might have missed the first down just by an inch or two we'll see they will measure we'll tell you the results of that measurement in just a moment indeed that measurement did show first down Hamilton the Alouettes failed by just an inch or two and with it goes their last hope for the Eastern Championship which realistically Abandoned them about one quarter ago. Harold Ballard, Ralph Cesio, very happy men right now here in the land of the Tiger Cat. And you'll be seeing that pair in the city of Toronto starting tomorrow. Ballard said that if his team won, he might just go to Hamilton and watch it on ESPN or go to Florida and watch it on ESPN. Don't bet on that. He'll be around Great Cup Week. 39 seconds remaining. The Cats will grind it out now goes down by 2 to 37. They lead by a comfortable margin of 11 points at 24-13. Tom McKee, I believe, is already in that Hamilton locker room. Yeah, we took the chance about a minute and a half ago, and I guess it wasn't a very uh, shaky one at that, as the Hamilton Tiger Cats are en route to the Grey Cup game, as they will meet the Edmonton Eskimos. Quiet, cool, calm, collected here right now. The absolute bedlam in about three or four minutes from now. And we'll be here to catch all the excitement for you. That uh, environment is going to change dramatically, as you suggest, with 15 seconds left now. The Tiger Cats ticking down the seconds for their first Grey Cup appearance in eight long years. And for this man, Joe Scudella, it has been a most frustrating season, let alone a very frustrating afternoon. They had to leave right up until the fourth quarter. There goes the time. And there go the fans whooping it up because the Tiger Cats are the Eastern champions of 1980 and will indeed meet the Edmonton Eskimos in the 80 Grey Cup game next Sunday in Toronto. Scanella shaking John Payne's hand who is airborne now. A very happy man to turn what appeared to be a disastrous season during which he might have even lost his job around to this point. A first place finish capped today by an Eastern Championship victory by a 24-13 score over the Montreal Alouettes. You just never know in the world of sport what is going to happen. And for Payne, well, the 
season has vindicated him. The Tiger Cats, who finished in first place somewhat shakily, with a very uninspiring record of eight wins, seven losses, and one tie, proved again today they are the best team in a strange CFL Eastern race this year. And they began to become a good team about six weeks ago. And now, gathering momentum here as they walk into that locker room, well, who can say what's going to happen a week from today? Be with us next Sunday from the Grey Cup game in Toronto. It may be a much better ball game than many believe. There's Lyle Wozniczynski. He's happy. The ex Winnipeg Blue Bomber has made the Grey Cup now with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And believe me, Wozniczynski made a sizable contribution to this Hamilton victory today. The Tiger Cat mascot. The fans now pouring all over the field here at Hyperwind Stadium. They've waited a long time for this to happen. And not many among these jubilant fans just a month and a half ago realistically thought this could happen. But indeed it has. Well, Trojans of Southern California clash with Notre Dame's Fighting Irish. It